we're taking a look back at the incredible Hollywood Hulk Hogan in the magazines. Uh, sorry, I forget who asked for it. I like to try to give you a shout out to the ones who requested. I just I went back in some of the uh, comments and I just couldn't find it. Um, this is probably going to be our longest video yet, so brace yourself. Uh, because Ric Flair, I thought, had the most magazines. He was crushed by Hulk Hogan. He is on the most magazines of anyone from 1980 to still sometimes today. Um, we're going to look at just about all of them, except for a small little corner shot here and there. We're going to do it where he's dominant, um, especially like later on when he's uh, real popular. We're just going to cover the main stories. Um, if I didn't, you'd have another 60 magazines in this pile here, which is already the most I've ever done for any one particular wrestler. I'm not particularly a fan of Hulkamania. Not particular. I'm not at all a fan of Hulkamania, but I am a fan of the heel Hulk Hogan, and I loved NWO Hollywood Hogan. I thought that was great. Um, so we're, it's, it's an interesting magazines ahead. We're going to look at him all the way through from the beginning to the very, very end. And uh, starting off, his very first Madison Square Garden appearance, December 7, uh, 17th, 1979. Uh, this is also the night Harley Race defended the NWA world title against Dusty Rhodes. Hogan's first magazine cover ever. May 80, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. The Incredible Hulk Hogan, I will control wrestling in the 80s. And truer words could not have been spoken. Number one, first issue, Hulk Hogan, May 1980, PWI. Cover shot is Harley Race and Dusty Rhodes for the title. Issue number two for Hogan, <clears throat> August 1980, Sports Review Wrestling. Gets a good main shot there. So that's his first big cover. Back on another small one for Wrestling Review, August 1980. And it's just the top banner shot for Hogan up top. <clears throat> the incredible Hulk Hogan living in the shadow of Superstar Graham is what the story is. Already they're making the comparisons to Superstar Billy Graham. October 1980 against Tito Santana. Sports Review, October 80. Another really good shot uh, early on here of Hogan. Small shot now in November 1980 with Freddie Blassie on the bottom of the page. Uh, Hogan will destroy Backlund or he'll be fired. Harley Race and Tommy Rich get the cover story. Hogan makes his first trip to Japan, New Japan to be exact, taking on Antonio Inoki. Uh, and challenging for the NWF title at this point. Now Hogan has the uh, the, the, the traditional uh, blonde mustache, Fu Manchu, with the black beard. He had that very early on, long before uh, Hollywood Hogan did. Let's take a look inside at a couple pics here so you can see early Hogan in Japan. They're not the closest of shots, but... It's hard to see some of them, but there's some pretty good pictures. And of course, in Japan, it's always uh, in color. And here it just says, and Hogan challenging for the NWF title, Antonio Inoki champion. Um, a couple of pretty good pay, uh, picks in here of Hogan. If you look closely, you can see his black beard here and the blonde mustache. There's not really a good definitive picture, but you get the idea once again. I think there's one more page of these two. Early, real early shot. Hogan's first tour in Japan. Good shot of driving the elbow to the back of Anoki. Here's a better look at that beard shot there with him early on. So he did have that quite early. And uh, a couple shots here with Anoki. <clears throat> this was um, Monthly Pro Japan in uh, December 1980. And that's also his first, his first tour in Japan. He makes... Uh, also a cover of a, of a magazine in Japan, which is pretty cool for his first tour there. Um, his size alone is enough for you know people to want to come out and see the guy. It was definitely a uh, an attraction for sure. 
Shea, Shea Stadium, spectacular. <clears throat> Hogan, that was, that was the program to the event. I didn't actually mean to show that because he really wasn't on that. But um, he would take on Andre the Giant. That story will be covered in Sports Review, October, I'm sorry, December 1980. <clears throat> and a great shot of Hogan and Andre uh, on the cover. The classic shot of Andre shooting the foot deep into the back of Hogan. And even when he was uh, heel back then, he still wore the white and red and yellow, uh, mostly yellow trunks. Here he is in the AWA, January 81 with the Crusher. Pro Wrestling Illustrated, January 81. Another nice uh, front cover shot of Hogan. <clears throat> Another shot with him and Andre. Hogan says, I'll shatter the myth of Andre the Giant. Spring 1981 annual sports review. Used to love this cover as a kid. Tony Atlas pressing Hulk Hogan well over his head on the cover of PWI, August 1981. Also, Harley Race defending the world title against Mil Mascaris in the corner. <clears throat> Wrestling news covering Hogan and Andre from Shea Stadium and throughout the WWF uh, arena feuds throughout that early 80 period. <clears throat> Backlund taking on Hogan on Inside Wrestling, July 81. This is my signed copy. I have just a couple of signed magazines by Hogan, a couple of uh, 16 by 20s. Um, this was one of the better covers. I've always loved this cover of Hogan. I uh, thought it was a great shot, him and Backlund. They never wrestled at the Garden uh, twice in, once in Boston, twice in Philly, or reverse that. I know there was twice one place and once another where, but uh, never happened at the Garden. <clears throat> Very sought after, very expensive issue because of the cards. We've seen this pop up in several videos now. Uh, Hogan, Andre, wrestling superstars, great cover. Uh, just, it's a shame not many people have this issue. It's, it's, a, it's a great looking magazine cover. Early Hogan as a heel, summer of 81. Um, they just gobbled these up. They became super expensive because of the cards. All the kids cut the cards out of them. Some of the cards could sell into the hundreds just for one single card, especially now that people are getting them graded. Some of them are up to five, six hundred dollars. The prices are ridiculous. This magazine goes well into the several thousands. Um, although I did see one sell on eBay not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago for five fifty, um, but I think it had some damage to it, and some of the pictures had a little bit of water stains. But still, I mean, five fifty? Come on, <clears throat> it's crazy. Hogan would be back on a small corner shot, October 81 Sports Review with um, uh, Stan Hansen in the corner and the chin lock on the bottom, Tommy Rich and Harley get the center pick. The incredible Hulk Hogan posing on the cover again for Wrestling News 81. Hogan and Ivan Putzky when they were feuding in the WWF. This is uh, the winter special for Wrestling World. Wrestling World put out two issues in 81, this one and one with, um, um, I forget now, it was either Nick Bockwinkle and Backlund, or that was 79, or it was Harley Race and Brody. Um, for 80, 79, 80, 81, they only put out two issues a year for Wrestling World. And then 82 and up, they started going every other month. <clears throat> Hogan, 82, July, Inside wrestling with Nick Bockwinkle challenging for the AWA title. Um, I have a magazine with Hogan and the, the, the if you want to say dusty finish, when Hogan takes the title from um, Bockwinkle and he's got the belt on and he's, he's posing with it. It's in a Japanese issue. I, for the life of me, I can't find it. And it sucks because I really wanted to show that for this video and I've been searching I have so many Japanese issues I just I can't find it I can't remember which issue it's in there was some great shots of Hogan with the AWA belt even though he didn't win it I think you know they won it they fooled everybody and they took it back and you know pissed all the fans off and things may have been a little different had Vern kept Hogan because he was super red hot because of this Rocky 3 appearance uh, Rocky 3 coverage with Hogan Stallone in Wrestling Review, July of 1982. 
Hogan once again on PWI. He's been on a bunch of PWIs early on. December 1982, Hogan. And this is during his first garden appearance when he poses with this particular robe. Ivan Putzky once again on the cover of Ringside Wrestling. This is also issue number one for Ringside. That's, a 19, that's May of 1983. These are terrible for putting dates on. It just says spring on the front. It doesn't say a month or a year. Inside the magazine it does. So June of, I'm sorry, May of 83. If you're trying to find that one, it does run a few bucks because it's issue number one. <clears throat> AWA Major League Wrestling program with uh, Hulk on the cover and uh, also talking about his Rocky appearance, gaining super popularity in the AWA. Fans loved him. Hulkamania originally started there, was definitely running wild in the AWA, and he was red hot, yet they still stuck with Mr. Bockwinkle as their champ. <clears throat> Wrestling 83, winter. Hogan posing on issue number one for Wrestling 83. This would run well into the 90s. I'm not sure how, how far past, but this is the very first issue for the wrestling and they counted it by year. It'd be 83, 84, 85, and all the way up until they finished. This was their, their attempt of a, being close to um, the main event wrestling magazine with slick, glossy paper and a lot of color photos inside but just fell a little bit short. And then later on, it got better again, but nothing would beat Main Event. Main Event was a great magazine. <clears throat> Hogan back on the bottom here on February 83 with Ken Patera, battling it out for wrestling's strong men. PWI Annual, uh, Winter 83. This one is signed by Tony Atlas across the front, and it's a Another throwback match from the WWF, a different match that we've seen them on the cover of the last PWI, but um, different photo uh, also on the cover here, but same story that's recycled from the other PWI. So if you have one or the other, the stories are the same in this one. <clears throat> Most of those annuals were all recycled stories. This is a uh, Japanese cover, Hogan making another tour back to Japan, this time teaming up with Antonio Inoki and then winning the MSG tournament, um, the MSG tournament, Madison Square Garden tournament. It's kind of a weird setup. I mean, uh, Antonio Inoki was, you know, infatuated with Madison Square Garden and the electricity and he wanted to create that same kind of feel in Japan. So he called it the MSG tournament, the Madison Square Garden tournament, which was just really didn't fit for a, a tournament name, you know, coming from Japan. But it was a big tournament later. Now it's known as the G1 Climax, um, but this was the, uh, the pre before that. And this is Hogan and Anoki winning that. This was a tag team at the time, MSG tournament. G1 Climax obviously is singles. Um, this was uh, 1983, um, sorry, January 1983's issue. This is the trophy that they win. This is Madison Square Garden across the top. And they have all the color photos of those two before they would be feuding just a few months later in the very first IWGP tournament. The rings, Hogan on the bottom, just says Hulk Hogan declares war, Bob Backlund up top, Bob Backlund's days are numbered. This is April 83, the rings. Official wrestling, this is also the very first issue, premier issue of official wrestling. This is a one of the probably the, the worst publication, cheapest paper, cheapest uh, photos, photos that were out of focus, uh, overexposed, underexposed, uh, print that you could hardly read. Uh, it was just really low budget. And, you know, this will tell you exactly why they were only around for six issues. They didn't make it past 84. And they came out uh, somewhat like they came out like five issues a year and I think they only topped out with seven total. So um, uh, wrestling, official wrestling, but Hogan gets the number one shot on the cover and it's a garden match. <clears throat> IWGP tournament number one, uh, very first tournament, 1983. This is June's issue of Gong and it has all the participants in the IWGP tournament. The winner of the IWGP tournament would get the championship trophy belt to become the first IWGP tournament champ. Hogan makes it to the end with Anoki. Anoki is still the NWF champion at the time. Hogan would go on to 
become the first IWGP heavyweight tournament champion. Instead of getting a trophy like they got for the MSG series, they got a trophy belt. Um, it's, there's, there's, it's up for debate. People saying Hogan was the IWGP champion. No, he wasn't. Well, you know, yes, he was. He was the champion. He was a champion of the tournament. And for his belt, it is a tournament trophy belt. It's not a defended belt slash, yes, it is. The following year, he gets a bye for the tournament and only competes in the final against the winner of the next year's tournament. So that's when he would defend the title. So he would get a pass in the next tournament, defend the title once a year if he would win. Of course, Anoki would go to the finals and win the next several, um, but Hogan would be the first. Hogan again, same recycled uh, cheap photo that Wrestling Review rings and um, uh, Wrestling News, because they were all owned by the same publisher, um, same photo. They use the same thing over and over and over again, just change the color of the backgrounds. Uh, this is another shot, October of 83, with Hogan posing on the front. <clears throat> the Wrestler, September 83, again with Nick Bockwinkle on the cover. <clears throat> There's a story behind Starcade 83 that Hogan was supposed to appear on this card. Um, then things changed, and he would end up going with the WWF just a month or six weeks later. Um, Starcade 83, and also, this is signed by Harley and Ric Flair on the uh, cover. It's also signed by a bunch of guys inside, including Hogan inside. And here's Hogan's uh, color photo um, inside the program for Starcade. But the deal fell through and somehow ended up going with the WWF instead. Kind of interesting to see how that would have changed things had he went with NWA and the Crockett territory at that time. But a rare shot of Hogan in the Starcade program there. <clears throat> Hogan on the wrestler, February 1983. Um, small corner shot on the bottom. How far can Hulk's American dream go? Tito Santana gets the cover shot of March 84, but Hogan uh, battling Harley Race uh, for the um, uh, NWA, and uh, Harley Race has uh, Hogan in the headlock and a small corner shot uh, in the side there. Better shot of Hogan and Andre, I'm sorry, of um, Harley. April 84, the wrestler. Now Hogan reversed in that headlock, and he has him in one. Hulk Hogan returns to the WWF, what this means for wrestling. Yep, wrestling is in for a major, major facelift. <clears throat> Not necessarily for the better for some people. Meanwhile, Iron Sheik wins the WWF championship, defeats Bob Backlund at Madison Square Garden, April 1984's issue of Main Event. And this is also Main Event's wrestling announcement that Hogan returns to the WWF. <clears throat> we won't see too many small photos of Hogan from here on out. Maybe just a couple. The rest are full cover shots as he would become the new WWF heavyweight champion. Main Event May of 84, making the announcement Hulk Hogan wins the WWF title. Cover of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Uh, this was the weekly version of the monthly magazine, which came out four times a month, uh, March 20th. And this is saying how <clears throat> Bruiser Brody signs to wrestle uh, Hulk Hogan for the title. Of course, it's not a true story, but this is what roughly translates uh, on the cover here, talking about the hype with Hogan and uh, Brody getting a match together. Fans in Japan would love to have seen that. I think fans all over the world would love to have seen that in 1983 and four for sure. <clears throat> the very first World Wrestling Federation magazine, April slash May of 1984, and it's got a great shot of Hogan with the big green belt, look great around his waist, and uh, that belt was not around very long for sure. 
<clears throat> and um, this is your first look at Hogan with that belt on a cover of a magazine. He wouldn't be on many covers at all with that magazine. Um, this one would definitely be the best shot. This is also a very rare sought after issue being that it's issue number one. <clears throat> May of 1984, Hogan back on the cover of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, posing and flexing up front. Hogan back on the cover of Wrestling World. This is during his MSG uh, tournament um, tag team in, in Japan and Antonio Inoki at the bottom here holding down their opponent. But they're talking about Hogan in the WWF and becoming champion as Hulk Hulkamania runs wild in the Northeast. Here's another good shot at Hogan with the green belt on the cover of Wrestling All-Stars, August 1984. Um, Hulk Hogan sweeps the country. <clears throat> Issue number three of Victory Sports Wrestling. Um, I believe this was put out just as a slap in the face to McMahon. McMahon's original magazine was called Victory Magazine. Victor and... Uh, Stanley Weston owns the rights to Victory because his magazines come by Victory Sports. And McMahon had to stop using it, lost the lawsuit, so he changed the name to the WWF magazine. Uh, right after that, Stanley Weston, who puts out Inside Wrestling, the wrestler in PWI, put out his own Victory Wrestling magazine, which I thought was great. Um, but again, these are just uh, recycled stories for the most part. There might be one story that's different, uh, but most of them are just uh, older stories repeated in like a best of type of magazine. <clears throat> this is the next issue of WWF Magazine. I honestly didn't know I had this until maybe I was filming a video just like six months ago and I remembered or I seen that I had it. Um, and this is another one that, that goes for a pretty good amount of money. Both champions for the time, Wendy Rector, who beat the fabulous Moolah, and Hogan now with the new style of the WWF belt. Hogan back on the cover of Wrestling World Special, October 1984. A WWF slash Hulk Hogan dedicated pro wrestling photo album printed in Japan uh, full color, 100% gloss, thick cardstock paper. This is huge, thick, heavy paper. Goes for a pretty penny as well. Full color of the WWF and um, some of the WWF wrestlers who were been coming in and out of New Japan at the time from like, say, 1980 up until like 85 is when the plug kind of got pulled there. And they tried it again in like 90 and we'll go through that. And But it was just, WWF is just too far gone by that point. Um, but overall, a, a really good program, um, not program, a uh, photo album for uh, the WWF uh, Japanese version of uh, their take on the WWF wrestlers. Most of the ones that who tour Japan anyway. This is issue number one, PWI's uh, color, uh, super color special, which was basically a giant poster. You fold it out, there's a giant poster of the Road Warriors on here. And there's several different smaller photos. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what this is. Those who know know what it is, and those who don't, it's just it's a maybe a six sided folded giant poster. But when it's folded, it's a magazine. So if you open it completely out, it's a giant poster of the Road Warriors. And they put out a handful of these, probably a little bit more than a handful. I have the first couple, um, but that was it. And these also, again, they they go for a pretty good penny. These stupid things. Official wrestling, uh, this might actually be the last issue. It's funny now, because Hogan's on the first issue. And yeah, it's definitely the last issue, because they weren't around in 85. This is November 84, and uh, Hogan and Backlund talking about the showdown that must happen. And it doesn't, but the final issue for official wrestling and Hogan there with an older throwback shot from 80 right here, this photo here. He wasn't wearing that robe anymore uh, at that point in 84. Hogan on the cover of Inside Wrestling, December 1984, talking about the, the feud about to start with Big John Studd, and that was a pretty good feud. A couple of cage matches at the uh, Brendan Byrne Arena, um, and also uh, Philly. Um, wrestling's main event, shot of Hogan with the green belt. At this point though, the belt was already changed out to that other style that we've seen. Uh, these magazines haven't caught up to that yet. But November uh, 84, Hogan reigns supreme. <clears throat> Wrestling World, 
wrestling photo album number five was released and Hogan is front and center here and these are all throwback photos from uh, past covers of the different Stanley Weston magazines April 85 the rock and wrestling connection for, uh, for the first time joining up together on the cover of a magazine Cindy Lauper Captain Lou Albano and the Hulk Hulk is coming back to Japan he went, would be back in 84. Um, I have a lot of coverage of it in my Japanese issues, but no American issues covered it, and no Japanese covers had him back on a cover uh, until 85. And here's another shot, Hogan. It would be back. And at this point, Hogan would have one IWGP win. Anoki would have one IWGP win. And now they're having the rubber match. Only this time, it's WWF versus IWGP. These are two ticket stubs. This is a ticket stub for June 13, 1985, when Anoki defeated Andre in blue. And the ticket stub for the following uh, event, uh, when Hogan at the finals went against uh, Anoki in the orange. Here is a program magazine to that event talking about the match for the WWF versus IWGP. Battle of the Titles, and this is also Gong Weekly's coverage of that final match between those two. Of course, uh, the titles didn't switch. Um, I, it was some kind of a draw or disqualification of some sort. Um, but Hogan keeps his title. Anoki would continue on as the IWGP Tournament Champion. Just a couple of more short years away, in 87, the IWGP title would become a, a world defended title and no longer held in a tournament, even though they did have some more tournaments. Uh, and it's, it's very confusing. Um, main events wrestling puts out a issue of heroes and villains. Um, it's more of a photo album, giant folks, full page photos of wrestlers and Hogan's on a small corner. This issue is also uh, a difficult one to find at times and it goes for a few bucks. The Last Days of Dr. Death, David Schultz, July of 85, biting the forehead of a bloody Hulk Hogan inside wrestling. And we all know what happened to David Schultz shortly after the 2020 incident. Hogan now primed and ready to take on Rowdy Roddy Piper for the Rock and Wrestling Connections um, turmoil that Piper was causing that led to the war at the, uh, was it the Brawl for It All, I believe it was called. Um, this is PWI's issue July of 85. Let's get it on, Piper and Hogan. Enough of the hype, it's time to wrestle. Main event July 85, small corner shot of uh, WrestleMania coverage in this issue, also covering um, uh, Pro Wrestling USA's uh, Northeast um, Jersey show. They had, um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, it's, it's escaping me for some reason. Um, the coverage for the Japanese issue for PWI, and it's got Hogan and Mr. T, great looking cover of Weekly Gong, uh, April uh, 25th issue of Gong, and this has got all your full color uh, coverage of WrestleMania, main event and undercard. Main event, again, is back for some Mania coverage. Uh, Trying to see, the, uh, June of 1985, Star Wars 85, duh, that's the name, that's the name I was trying to think of for uh, Nagasaki and Mortel as well on the other main event. Star Wars 85 uh, is covered really well in this issue with some uh, color uh, photos in the center. Um, wrestling scene, August, also Piper and Hogan during WrestleMania. Hogan's getting uh, choked uh, in a, uh, a sleeper. We'll remember this cover down the road a little bit when we see that uh, when they feud again some 10 years later. Um, but coverage in wrestling scene in August of 85's issue of wrestling scene. Hogan back on Inside Wrestling, August 1985, and it's also covering WrestleMania. Main events, Wrestling decided to put out Wrestling Photo uh, Album Number 3, 
Um, there was four of these. Hogan was on the cover of the third one. Uh, the third one, the fourth one's I think the hardest to get, and then the other ones are also equally as difficult. But the fourth one is is really a, a, a white pony. Hogan taking on Mr. Fuji in a weird bout that you would think. Um, this took place at the Sands Casino in Atlantic City, and it was one boxing match, one wrestling match, uh, and one kickboxing match uh, for a different kind of a show they were trying to do, and Hogan um, was the main event wrestling with uh, Mr. Fuji, and here's just a color cover shot of it, the wrestler in November uh, 1985. I think he would have had a better opponent than Mr. Fuji at that time. He was, you know, primarily a manager at that point. <clears throat> this was issue number two. Like I said, there's a, you know, I don't know how many they came out with. I have like four of these, another, you know, six folded outsides of a poster magazine for PWI. Hogan and Magnum TA on the cover. Hogan on the cover of PWI once again, now up to January of 1986. Hogan's now a couple of years as champ. And uh, good shot of Hogan and some pictures of him uh, when he was uh, just young growing up. Hogan back on the cover with Backland. And the same photo we've seen in the other issue, uh, but this is the wrestler's uh, 20 year anniversary uh, issue. Started in April of 66. This is January's 86's issue. Flair and Dusty get the main shot. Orndorff and Hogan start either their feud or their friendship. One or the other happened at this point. Uh, February of 1986. Hogan and a older shot. This was taken from Japan in March of 1986. Uh, wrestling's main event. Achievement Award issue for March 86 PWI for 85's Achievement Awards. And uh, I'm not sure what Hogan won that year. It doesn't say on the cover and I just don't see it what it is. I don't, I don't think he'd be wrestler of the year. I, don't, I would be flair anyway. Um, he'd probably be like the most popular or some bullshit. Hogan back on the cover now with Bruiser Brody talking about a dream match with Brody. And Hogan, of course, the match never happens, but the match made a dream match very believable. <clears throat> I showed this in another video. Let's just take another look at it of Hogan as the champion and Brody as the challenger. And they would come up with some pretty believable photos here of Brody getting ready to get clotheslined by Hogan. Pages are so thick, it feels like there's three pages here, but it's only one. Um, again, now, Brody giving the chop to Hogan. Hogan here at the bottom giving the knee drop. Brody coming down and chopping the top of Hogan's head. Of course, this match never happened. It's all just photoshopped and very well done. It's almost believable, you would think. But that's as close as we would get to seeing a Hogan-Brody matchup, sad to say. <clears throat> Spring of 1986 of the Wrestler Annual, and real good shot of Hulk with the uh, second version of his WWF belt. Here is the fourth and final action photo album that I was talking about, released by Wrestling's main event. Um, looks like he's taking on Kamala. He also has the face paint on as he's taking on Kamala. This is an 87. This is out of order. Sorry, guys. This belongs in 87. This is not 86. Spring 86, Hogan on the cover of PWI Annual. Also, Kerry Von Erich as the NWA World Champ. Billy Jack with the Florida belt. Magnum TA gets the main cover. And we debut Hulk Hogan's new action figure. This is your first look at the... That's not really an action figure. It's more like a doll, like it says, a living doll. It's more like a rubber, rubber doll. And... If you have those in good shape, I also see there's some major um, uh, figure collectors out there, man, and th th those things go for crazy money, those figures. I can't believe it. <clears throat> Hulkamania is dead. Randy Savage proves it. PWI cover June 1986. Savage and Hogan are getting ready to square off in the WWF. 
Hogan. Is he strong enough to survive WrestleMania 2? July 1986, Inside Wrestling, All-American Special Issue, Magnum, Sergeant Slaughter, and Hogan with the American flag right behind, just in time for the 4th of July, Summer Issue. <clears throat> Hogan, King Kong Bundy, WrestleMania 2 coverage from August 1986, Inside Wrestling. Road Warriors share the cover with Hogan on the main event. Hulk Hogan's rule-breaking past. Full color centerfold inside to see. August 1986. Premier issue number one. Anyone comes out with a premier issue, you're starting to see the trend here. They put Hogan on it because they know it's going to sell. Anything Hogan was on, sold. Early 80s, without a doubt, was off the shelf. Um, premier issue of Wrestling Power. This is September 1986. Coverage from WrestleMania 2 on the cover of a match now on, on um, PWI. We kind of lost sight of those kind of covers on PWI for a number of years. First couple of years, it was matches, and then it went to a strictly posed covers. Um, so it's a rare shot of all three photos of three wrestling matches going on now. Super cards, this is called September of 1986. Also talks about Hanson winning the AWA title. Hogan and Anoki on the premiere issue of Double Action Wrestling, October 86. Again, issue number one, putting Hogan on it from an older match that took place several years back uh, in Japan for the IWGP. But most of the, of the story inside was all for American matches. Hogan on the cover again of main event, November of 86. Premier issue, issue number one. Once again, Hogan on a small corner shot with the newly uh, WWF belt, the black version. Uh, Wrestling Fury, also Flair and Magnum TA get the front cover. <clears throat> Bobby Heenan getting a hand full of his hair pulled by the Hogan on January 87, the wrestler. Wrestling Power. January of 1987, Hogan fully flexing with the belt. February 1987, Inside Wrestling, and Hogan, Piper, and Orndorff talking about the Triangle of Hate. <clears throat> Main Event Wrestling, February 1987, moving up to 87 now. And has Hogan met his match with Paul Orndorff? And of course, that, would, that feud would get them right on national television on a Saturday night main event in a cage. I always love this cover, Hogan's head on a stick. Man, it's great. Um, some people hated it, thought it was too. I thought it was great. I thought it was so ridiculous that you, you have to love it. Uh, March of 87 and Hogan with his head speared. <laughs> March of 87, Inside Wrestling, Hogan celebrates his third year uh, on top as champion. <clears throat> Hogan taking on Hercules Hernandez. April 87, The Wrestler. Andre meeting Hogan on the small corner here, talking about the possibility of those two going at it. Of course, they're building up for WrestleMania 3. This would be an April 87's issue. April of 87, April is when the, uh, when the, or March or April, whatever, came out, uh, Mania 3. So this would have hit the newsstands around December. So. <clears throat> They're talking about the hype, PWI's hype for Mania 3, Hogan and Andre brace for All Out War. This is the tail of the tape and has their sizes and measurements of both men. May of 87 that was. Hogan, Andre squaring off. This is an older shot. This isn't from uh, Mania. And this is May of 87. Hogan versus Andre, how the experts see the match. Hogan, Andre, WrestleMania 3, The Untold Story. And this is a match with him that just finished up with Kamala, because I can tell by the face paint when he painted his face when he took on the Ugandan Giants. June of 87, main event. And a shot from the match, Hogan and Andre. Sports Review Wrestling, June of 1987. 
The war is bigger than the both of them. <clears throat> Hogan pins Andre. You'd figure that would be a little bit bigger uh, of a story, especially when McMahon spread the lies that Hogan uh, was the first person to ever pin Andre. And in the Andre video that we filmed, that I made for you guys, we count down the number of people who pinned Andre and they're in the magazines. So Hogan was by far the first person to slam him and by far the first person to pin him. Uh, first person to pin him and slam him was Kendo Nagasaki. Uh, not the one you're thinking of, the one in uh, World of Sport in England. Um, this is July 87, uh, main event covering, uh, I was gonna say Great American Bash, uh, WrestleMania three. <clears throat> Double action, July of 87, Hogan on the cover, pointing the finger with the gold chain and the gold belt. Hogan's deadliest foes inside. WrestleMania coverage on Wrestling Scene. This is one of the few non-bloody covers of Wrestling Scene that you'll see. WrestleMania 3 makes history, being the biggest event for that time. July 1987, coverage for it inside Wrestling. This is an older shot of Hogan down here at the bottom corner, Wrestling Power, um, July 1987. Everybody's putting Hogan on their covers now, especially in 87. Here's Hogan picking up Andre for the slam. Um, Hogan topples Andre at WrestleMania 3. You'll never see the magazines say Hogan's the first person to slam him, and they wouldn't be that stupid because Harley Race is on the cover of Sports Review 1980, slamming Andre on the cover. So McMahon can say all he wants. The magazines won't print that kind of stuff, especially when their publication printed photos on the cover of, of magazines with him actually getting slammed. This is August of 87 with the new style belt here uh, that wouldn't be around for very long. I really didn't care for it. Some people love that style belt. Um, it, it was all right. I like the other one a little bit better, but it was not around for very long. <clears throat> Made a change on that pretty quick. Uh, September 1987 Sports Review, Hogan for President. Hogan defeats Harley Race in the WWF, September of 87, Inside Wrestling. Hogan taking on Paul Orndorff, Good versus Evil, September 87, Wrestling Power. I'll fix that there. Hogan on the cover of Double Action wrestling once again he made a lot of covers of double action and also action magazines <clears throat> wrestling world hogan and savage um I'm trying to see where the story tag is there's not much here saying anything the one and only hulk hogan's all it says and macho man savage down the bottom but it is a bloody savage uh on the cover here with hogan wrestling world october of 87. Man, so many magazines already. I'm running out of room behind me. <clears throat> wow, we're 40 minutes into this. I'm not even halfway through. I got to speed up. This is nuts. Um, there is a lot of magazines to cover with Hogan. My God. Uh, November 87, Hogan taking on Killer Khan of wrestling's main event. Terrible looking wrestling magazine cover. I mean, come on. It looks like People Magazine, for God's sake. Uh, December of 87, Hogan with just a big dumb face. Uh, another crappy cover again. I mean, this should have been your cover and this should have been a small picture if you ask me. But, you know, Hogan's face is on it. It's selling. You know, put it on a popsicle, they're buying them. Box of cereal, they're buying it, right? January 1988 now, another year gone by. Hogan uh, is bored with the WWF title, question mark. Ronnie Garvin becoming the world heavyweight champion, defeating Ric Flair. Hulk Hogan meets the Macho Man, main event wrestling February 1988. Wrestling 88 with a horrible cover of Hogan looking, <coughs> excuse me, looking like, you know, half naked. I mean, this is bizarre. I mean, I, I know it's the 80s, but even for the 80s, this is a little unacceptable. What the freak, man? Uh, Hogan on his boat and practically wearing a G string. <coughs> Double action wrestling Hogan, much better cover here. Putting it all out there, flexing on the cover of February 1988. Hogan with another match of with Hercules Hernandez at the Garden, February 88. <coughs> wrestling double action again. 
Is Superstar Graham a threat to Hulk Hogan's popularity? I think Hogan's pretty safe. March 88, Hogan asking for the fans to let me hear you. Andre the Giant wins the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship with the whole tobacco with Ted DiBiase inside wrestling April 88. By this point, I was well removed from the WWF. Still buying the magazines for a couple more years though, but strictly UWF, NWA, Florida, uh, and any AWA for that matter, uh, anything but the WWF at this point for myself. Um, April 88, Wrestling Power. Also got your last look at Bruiser Brody on the cover with a bloody head from his independence in the NWF, which was the different NWF in the Northeast, ran out of New Jersey. Um, it wasn't a bad company for guys who were on top who were coming down um, to get some more spot shows and to keep them going, especially in the Northeast where they were popular. They had just left the WWF. Uh, even Wendy Rector went there and won the title. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter went there. Um, Wrestling World, April 1988. Hogan pumps up for a Mania showdown. <clears throat> a juiced up Randy Macho Man Savage and Hulk Hogan Wrestling 88 spring issue. Hogan, May of 1988, the wrestler. Hogan is still the people's champion. What does the people's champion mean anyway, right? Pro Wrestling uh, Illustrated, June of 88. Is this, is the end near for Hulk Hogan? Not quite. Gold Belt Wrestling, Hulk Hogan on the cover. Not much of a story behind it. Just looking for a sale, June of 88. PWI, July 88, Hogan and Andre squaring off before the Mania 3, or Mania 4, rather. <clears throat> Where is the day? July of 1988, The Wrestler, Hogan, 88, a rule breaker, question mark? Nope. Maybe you should have. August 88, The Macho Man, now the World Wrestling Federation champion, and rightfully so. Great looking champion, the Macho Man was. Um, and Hogan right behind them on NBC. NBC microphone right behind them, talking Saturday night's main event, most likely. Uh, August 1988, Inside Wrestling. Hogan deep in his thoughts here while Macho Man proudly wears the belt at the Trump Plaza after Mania. Is Hulkamania dead? Bloody Hogan in a steel cage. Always hated that blue square cage. I mean, it's just, I thought it sucked. Um, nothing beats a you know, good old chain link fence. August of 88, wrestling main event. I mean, it's cool to look at for the first time. Then after that, it's like, you know, all right, go back to the other. It was not cool, man. Didn't really care for it. Um, Hogan rules. Also, Steamboat wins the NWA world title, defeating Rick, uh, Ricky, uh, Ric Flair. This is September of 89, main event. Hogan's on a lot of main events. <clears throat> Sports review predictions. This has cracked me up before when I first read this. Uh, September 88, I think this is the issue. Yeah, Hulk Hogan will join the Four Horsemen. Give me a break. Sorry, the Four Horsemen are wrestlers, not entertainers. They entertained by wrestling. Hulk Hogan, wrestling power. Not really much to talk about. Just Hogan on the cover. The Mega Powers, uh, Hogan and Savage, friends once again. Inside Wrestling, October 88. Hogan, uh, November 1988, flexing on the cover of PWI. Wrestling Power, Hogan and Savage, sweeping every single magazine across the country now. Hogan, once again, older shot with the older belt from Mania 3 on Wrestling 89. Hogan sets himself apart from the others, was the tagline. April uh, 89, Hogan and Savage on the cover. One of the better looking covers for this time period. The covers were changing dramatically and gone was the full color, full cover shot of two wrestlers. It was more, how many faces can we squeeze on a cover to make a quick buck, you know? And that kind of turned me off with the magazines and made me kind of not 
go after them much past uh, 89, 90. Only, actually, the Stanley Westons I have complete all the way until 93 when Stanley Weston sold the company, and that's when I kind of stopped. But I do have some stuff from the 90s here we're going to get to soon, too. But uh, most of my stuff is from the 50s uh, through the 80s. Um, Wrestling Power, once again, Hogan, April of 89, with him and Savage. Terrible looking wrestling magazine cover, come on. May of 1989, Hogan admits he loves Elizabeth. Of course, we all love Elizabeth. Wrestling Power, really putting Hogan on every month now, or every other, because it's a quarterly magazine, or uh, every other month. May of 89, and um, I'm trying to see, that's Steve Regal. I'm trying to see, who, oh, Colonel De Beers with Steve Regal. That's the first time I ever noticed Steve Regal on the cover of a magazine. Not that Steve Regal, Lord Steven Regal, the real Steve Regal. <clears throat> Jerry the King Lawler takes the WCCW Texas Championship, which became a world title, the um, AWA world title from Kurt Hennig, and uh, I think that's the Memphis belt too, I'm not sure. He had three belts at one time. Uh, Really wasn't watching that then. Um, May of 89, uh, Hogan and Savage on the cover for uh, for the most part. Hogan... PWI again, May of 89, older shot with the older bell from version two. I think they're on their fourth version now, but it's that winged eagle that stuck around for, you know, quite a few years after this. June of 89, Hogan and Savage once again dominating the cover. Predictions for Mania 5. Former Canadian champion Dino Bravo now with the blonde hair taking on Hogan, July 89, the wrestler. Steamboat on the cover winning the world championship once again. His first PWI cover as champion. Hogan getting carried out on a stretcher. I'm not sure if I ever remember seeing that or why. Like I said, I stopped with the WWF, so I really don't know. Um, Wrestling 89, Mega Powers, and of course it's in pieces, trying to fit the pieces back together. Will they fit? Who knows? I know Savage was bitter towards him in real life towards the end. I don't know if they ever patched it up or not. Um, Let's see. uh, Don't see the... Oh, summer of 1990. Hogan and the Warrior trying to be friends, shaking the hands. And the main reason I have this this magazine is Harley Race's last championship when he was the WWC Puerto Rico champion. There's a full-color shot of Harley in here with the Puerto Rico title. <clears throat> and that would be shortly right after he retired. PWI summer of 1989, and it's got throwback stories, like I said, uh, of past shows. This is covering the past manias from uh, Mania 2, uh, 3, uh, maybe 4 or 5, uh, and also with Mr. T on the cover. Mostly going back, test your trivia for WrestleMania, PWI annual. August of 89, Hulkamania rules. Supercard Sunday, Hogan and Savage, Flair and Steamboat, August 89. August 89, Hogan, another throwback photo from the old style belt that I liked. Wrestling World, Hogan, um, the date, September 89, uh, Hogan uh, with the title, back on top. Hogan and Savage on the cover of Inside Wrestling, September 89. All three world champs, only that's not Larry Zabisco's world championship. He didn't have the belt at the time. Um, I believe that's his Western States Heritage belt, maybe. Um, I'm not 100% sure of that, but it wasn't the AWA's title. Um, Wrestling uh, Gold Power. And this is the uh, champions version, making you look at all three companies, world's champions. Savage and Hogan, Sports Review, October 89. Another good shot of those two, an actual wrestling match. No holds barred, Hulk Hogan, Savage, Zeus, and Beefcake, October 89. Muscle for Muscle. Who's more awesome, Luger or Hogan? Not even close, Luger. October 1989, Luger was jacked. 
fall 89 PWI annual with another throwback photo of Hogan earlier on with version two belt. Hogan's toughest matches on Sports Review 1989. The Wrestler, January 1990, there's the basic shot of Hogan. Quite becoming uh, with the black and no uh, red and yellow here. Hmm. 1990 winter of uh, wrestler ni wrestling 90. Um, Hogan is uh, deep in thoughts, thinking about should I possibly get a manager? That means turning heel usually, right? Hogan on the cover of Gong Weekly uh, talking about the upcoming event, the WWF is mo is coming to uh, the Tokyo Dome and it'll be uh, WWF versus New Japan versus Old Japan. First time ever, last time ever since this would ever happen. And uh, it, it, you know, it, it kind of bombed. I guess it really didn't go over well. The, the WWF stuff really didn't go over with the Japanese fans. They weren't into that cartoony kind of stuff. Um, it, it, the event itself, you know, the, on paper, some of the matches sounded great. But all in all, uh, it was a pretty lame show, if you ask me. And I, I just one of the few later 80s shows that I, was, I, I did watch and I actually still have on, on DVD. Um, March 1990. I'll, we'll go back into that in a second for the, another couple issues coming up. Uh, this is the um, March of 80, March of 90, a new decade now in uh, Inside Wrestling. And it's going back with uh, recycled stories from the past of Inside Wrestling um, with the Von Erichs on the bottom, the Road Warriors, also Flair up top with Michael Hayes and Andre and Hogan. So the event was, this is, this is interesting. This is the first time a magazine cover uh, would actually have a lineup sheet as its cover for a magazine. And this was the battle for uh, New Japan versus All Japan versus the WWF. It was to be Hulk Hogan versus Terry Gordy as the main event as Hogan is the world champ or the WWF champ. Giant Baba teaming up with Hogan uh, for their first time ever together versus Demolition. Uh, Tenru taking on Savage, which was a decent match. Um, the Ultimate Warrior versus DiBiase was an epic failure. Um, what other ones sound like good on paper? A Tiger Mask versus Bret Hart sounded like it would have been good, and it was, you know, kind of lame. Um, it was one other one that sounded like uh, Jake Roberts and the Boss Man, Kabuki versus Greg Valentine. Um, yeah, I guess that was it. Um, it, it what happened was. The fans wanted to see Hogan. They wanted to see him as champ. He had lost the title to the Warrior before he got there in Mania. Uh, they had no idea what the Ultimate Warrior was or what he was all about. He came running around like a, like a complete asshole, running around the ring, making a schmuck of himself. And the, the fans were just like staring at him and like, you know, bewildered. Like, what is this? You know, uh, they're not used to that kind of corny shit. They, they treat their sport real. Uh, they treat it with respect and they don't, you know, cartoon it up. And the Japanese people, it was not over with them. Um, I think they would try one more time with an event in New Japan and that would be the end of it because the, 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 they were not with it. And in the 90s, uh, they went with WCW. And that's why, was a, you know, there was a lot of joint ventures going on with WCW and, uh, New, J and New Japan at that point um, because they were just too cartooned and gimmicky. Terry Gordy, uh, after Hogan lost the belt, uh, was supposed to do a job for Hogan. Gordy said, I'm not losing to him. Um, I'm over in Japan. The fans love me here. And if he ain't the champ, I'm not getting pinned. So I'm out of the main event. So he, he left, didn't, didn't uh, go against Hogan and um, filled in for him with Stan Hansen. And the fans were happy to see that. They still weren't happy Hogan wasn't the champ at the time because he, like I said, lost it to the Warrior. Uh, just, you know, a couple of weeks before the, the event <clears throat> and um but stan hansen and and um and hogan actually had a decent match um in japan hogan had to wrestle he couldn't get away with just a punch and a kick and a leg drop and put your hand over your ear uh you have to move there and i, I give him you know some people say oh he sucks he can't wrestle he, he's he's not built for finesse he's you know he's 300 pounds he's not going to have any kind of wrestling finesse he's not going to look good when he's down there but he gave it his best shot. He did you know, decent enough. He did some holds and some locks and some arm locks, leg locks and some chin locks and stuff like that. Um, 
and Hanson, of course, you know, he can roll with anybody. The guy's a genius in the ring. Uh, good bloody match. They both went at it. Um, but all in all, the event wasn't really that much of a success. <clears throat> Hogan and Savage in a cage, uh, Wrestling 90. That is Springs issue. Hogan on the cover of uh, The Wrestler, uh, April of 1990. Hogan yelling victorious at something on Sports Review, May 90. Now WrestleMania's coverage is uh, hitting the magazines for May 90, Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. <clears throat> Another throwback photo of Hogan now that the Ultimate Warrior is the champion, still putting Hogan on their magazines to sell issues, uh, May 90. Hogan and Warrior square off again. I mean, the guy was built like a Greek god. I can't take that away from him, but that's pretty much all he had going for him as a wrestler. But, I mean, you know, the kids flock to it. You know, silly, douchey kids and, and, you know, parents taking their kids to the circus and that's what it became and, you know, good old family fun. While wrestling fans were, you know, clinging on the life, hoping that WCW would have some more of their NWA days, but Crockett by this point was gone and wrestling in general was really down the toilet in 90, 91, 92, 93. Uh, wrestler June of 1990, uh, Hogan and Kurt Hennig. WrestleMania 6's coverage, uh, Sports Review, July 90. Inside Wrestling, July 90, Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior pleading to become friends, become a tag team, blah, blah, blah. Never happens. August 1990, the wrestler Hogan and Warrior 2. Wrestler 90, Hogan versus Earthquake. Um, what's his name? Uh, Tenta? John Tenta? Is, is that how you say his real name? I, um, I've i never seen him wrestle, only in Japan. I, I liked him in Japan. He did a, he was great, and the fans loved him, too. Um, I, I just, like I said, I never watched the WWF after Mania 3. Um, so I don't know how these matches were. Uh, I just knew he had a dumb gimmick, and, and you know... McMahon had him look like a fool, but I mean, the guy was a, a legit kick-ass sumo wrestler uh, and beloved by the Japanese, that's for sure. There's another good shot of him here. Earthquake, okay. Uh, October of 1990. Flair and Hogan on the cover of Inside Wrestling 1990. Tale of two ex-champions. Hogan again with Earthquake. Um talking about SummerSlam, never seen one of those uh, wrestler December of 1990. The only big events that I've watched for the WWF were the, you know, the first three Manias, so that was it. And I did see when Savage won the title in, uh, I think, Mania 4, but I didn't watch the rest of the card. <clears throat> um, the wrestler 1991, Hogan flexing it out for the Survivor Series, full guide covered in that issue. Fall of 19, uh, probably February 1992, Another year has passed, Hulk Hogan. Has Hulk Hogan had enough? Win a free trip for two to WrestleMania 7, February 1981, PWI. Hogan, can he make it three? Uh, beating the Iron Sheik, beating Macho Man Savage, Hulkster's plan to regain the WWF title. Flair and Hogan square off in the WWF in March of 1992, Inside Wrestling. Decent front cover, more of a throwback look from the 70s, two wrestlers on the top and a wrestling hold, March of 1991. This is out of order. No, it's not. this is 91. Yeah, that's out of order. I think we're 92 now. Um, March of 1992. It was so hard putting these together, and it took me days because there's so many issues. I mean, I can't believe we're like an hour and five minutes into this, and I still got a bunch to go. Uh, if you're still with me, <laughs> we're almost there. Uh, March of eighty of ninety two, uh, Hogan taking on Mean Mark. Hogan taking on nobody, just about everybody on the front cover here. Uh, April of eighty of ninety one. 
Yeah, a lot of these are out of order. Sorry, guys. I must have fucked up. 91, 92. Just bear with me. I, I kind of screwed up the order here. Um, I was falling asleep at the wheel here. Uh, Sports Review Wrestling, uh, Hogan on the cover of May of 1991. Hogan taking on uh, Sid Vicious in May of 92, Inside Wrestling. Hogan taking on Sergeant Slaughter for the title. And Hogan winning the title back from the Sarge in June of 91's issue of The Wrestler. Man, these are all fucked up. I'm sorry, I'm killing you guys. Issue number, I think, two, it may have been, um, from the Wrestling 93 Rule Breaker. Uh, this is Hogan's last look on the cover for a long time uh, with the WWF belt. Um, and also got the black eye here. And like I said, I'm out of order, guys. Just bear with me. Um, July of 91, Hogan on the cover uh, after beating Slaughter. Inside wrestling, Hogan is burning mad for Slaughter. Um, July of 1991. August 1991, Hogan and Slaughter continue on. Hogan on the cover of Wrestling Eye, pretty close to the last issue we just seen like this with Hogan with the title. September of 92, Hogan um, thinking about uh, leaving uh, the WWF. September of 1991, Hogan and uh, Sid Vicious ready for their hype, for their war. Of course, everyone thought Sid was going to be the next guy and it never happened. Uh, Hogan in October 91 uh, goes off to shoot some films. October 91, SummerSlam 91, Inside Wrestling, Hogan and Slaughter uh, at the bottom corner. Hogan and Savage, November 91, the, the connection, the truth behind the connection. Hogan versus Flair, who will win the match of the century, December 1991, The Wrestler. December 91, Hogan and Sid on Sports Review. Wrestling classic throwback articles from uh, recycled issues on the wrestling classics. Some of these issues were pretty good. Um, this is also signed by Flair and also Hulk. And Hogan now would have left the World Wrestling Federation, went to the WCW, and he would become the WCW heavyweight champion. Here is your first look at Hogan on the cover of PWI with the big gold belt. Hulkamania runs wild again. And, uh, you know, it was, some people loved it, some people hated it. A lot of fans followed him there. A lot of fans were ticked off that he was there. Um, for good or for worse, uh, he was there, he was the champ, and he took on Flair and won the belt. Uh, all the coverage inside this issue of PWI. Now here's an interesting piece. Hulk Hogan and Wrestler America the following Monday night, um, or the, actually the following TV taping, um, he's wearing the old uh, WCW belt that Lex Luger uh, had wore when they first switched over and Flair left with the big gold. And he never held that belt. And here is a magazine cover with Hogan with that belt. So what is he doing with that belt? Because you just seen him win the big gold on a magazine previous and then the same month or summer of uh, the same, because this is, um, what was it? That was 94. Yeah, so this is just a couple of months away. These are quarterly issue, issues. He has the older style belt here, which he never held. And apparently, I guess they were getting the nameplate or something it changed, and they gave him to wear this out on TV. And they took this shot of him with this belt just to, to appear on TV with the belt when he first came out as champ. Uh, but he never held that belt. He didn't win that belt. It was just for this, this show, and that was it. So that's a rare pick of him with that gold belt. Ron Simmons was the uh, uh, Van Vader, um, Sting, and Luger and Flair were the only ones that held that. And then now uh, here's Hogan with it. It's pretty kind of, kind of funny. Uh, Sports Review would go under in 1992 and uh, would come back or 99, yeah, the end of 92, beginning of 93, Sports Review would end for a good year. And then in 94, it came back for a handful of issues. And then 95, it came back 
for a couple of issues and then it was gone again. Uh, this is, was one of the recycled um, uh, sports reviews with a new look, July of 1994. And you can see now the magazine's cut way smaller. It's just a little bit bigger than some of the Japanese size magazines that were a lot shorter. Uh, cheaper paper, cheaper staples, the magazines were, were terrible. The new company completely destroyed the magazines, hated them. Um, never bought another one or you know no, no more subscription nothing i was finished with them and i would just you know cherry pick an issue here or there off the shelf if it had a decent cover or a decent story i would always look i mean i never stopped looking but totally stopped buying at this point uh was really pissed off with that i mean the magazines were bad enough when they had crappy covers with a bunch of you know just faces on the cover but now you did this to it you made the paper cheaper you cut the size down i was just totally turned off man um I have, you know, maybe 60 or 80 of these small ones. That's it. I, you know, want not, nothing to really do with them. But this is Hogan and Sting uh, on their, uh, some kind, I think it was some kind of TV show that those two were in back in 94 on the cover of that sports review. Here is Hogan now with his first look with the big gold on a belt, uh, of the belt on a cover of sports review again, May of 1995. It's him and Savage now is also in the WCW as well. Same photo, just a little bit more jazzed up with the flames behind, with Hogan with the belt, him and Savage in June of 95. Hogan once again inside wrestling, mid-year report card, October 95, Hogan with the big gold belt once again. And he is first cover of WCW magazine uh, with the big gold <clears throat> and these magazines go for quite a few dollars even your average uh, magazine for WCW could run you like 30 bucks um, you know counting shipping some could be more and then some go up to 60 70 80 bucks it depends I mean they they, they, they weren't around for very long Stanley Weston ran them for a number of years in 1991 and I have a bunch of them when Stanley ran it but uh, uh, then it switched over uh, when the company made changes again and they got a different publisher. And uh, they I mean, you know, it's a company magazine. There's mostly advertisements in it. I don't have many. I had a few when they were had champions on the cover and this was Hogan's first uh, shot of him, uh, October of 1995 uh, with the big gold on WCW's magazine. Back again on Inside Wrestling, November of 95, classic look, Hogan. I mean, this is, you know, um, it's getting kind of worn out, you know, the red, the yellow, the, the, the Hulkamaniac, it's just, you know, it's over now. It's like, you know, 12, 13 years of it, and you're beating it to death. And a change was bound to happen, and certainly did, and it came in a big way. Of course, we all know what was next with the NWO and the big changes. Uh, WCW Hogan now on the cover, Savage uh, set to join the NWO, and Hogan and the Savage square off again, become nemesis once again. Uh, Hogan just about to fully, completely change to the black. And here is an early shot again of Hogan uh, as he's changing January of 1997. Um, uh, fully decked out in the black of the wrestler. And Piper would be back and join WCW from his long run with Mid-Atlantic years ago. Um, January 1997's issue to take on Hogan once again, rekindle their WrestleMania feud. Uh, another issue that goes for quite a few a few dollars. This issue, um, Hogan and Piper on the cover of Wrestling Superstars. Um, I don't see the date. Oh, right here, spring of 1997. Um, getting harder and harder to find. Uh, Hogan coverage uh, with Piper again uh, in this issue and the match on cover of the wrestler Hogan and Piper uh, and back of the headlock we've seen that happen in 1995 uh, at the mania cover and here they are again in, in uh, I'm sorry 85 and here they are again in 97 um, Hogan's head egg Roddy Roddy Piper on the cover of the wrestler Piper with the sleeper hold once again um, with Hogan on the, um, what is the name of this magazine? I honestly don't know. I don't always see his wrestlers. Maybe you guys can tell me this. I'm out of my league here. Um, I only bought it because of Piper and Hogan run the cover. Um, it's got to be called something. Maybe TV wrestlers? I'm going to take a guess. That's only a guess. I don't know what, what this publication even is. Um, 
May of 1997, uh, Hogan and Piper. There's some good color photos in here. It was a decent looking magazine. I gotta say that much. Um, inside Wrestling, fucking dates, man. February of 1997, and first look at the NWO together on the cover. Uh, all three guys, Trouble in Egosville. And NWO on the cover of WCW Magazine, spring of 1997. Hogan, Scott Hall, Eric Bischoff on the cover, and it is June of 1997. The Wrestler. Dream match with Sting and Hogan, Hollywood Hogan, um, about to happen for Starcade, and this is covered on The Wrestler, August 1997. Hogan, NWO for Life on the cover. Um, with the big goal, Dennis Rodman, and searching for that date fall of 1997 uh, of wrestling superstars. Pretty cool looking, busy looking cover there. NWO and also Sting Hogan with the belt in the corner of October 1997 inside wrestling. WCW Magazine talking about which way Sting's going to go. Is he going to join the NWO? Is he going to take on Hogan? This is December 1997's issue of WCW Magazine. Hogan versus Sting, the match of the century. And I have to admit, I was pretty excited for that one and got the pay-per-view and uh, kind of a, you know, you know, it was kind of a lame match. I mean, you know, it wasn't, it could have been a hell of a lot better. And then they pull the title off them and doing stupid shit like that. Just all it does is piss the fans off. It doesn't make them come back for more. And it would be crappy bookings and crappy matchups and, and, and shitty stories to come from this point on that just tanked the whole company. And it's, it's really a shame. Um, February 1989, uh, 98, uh, Sting and Hogan and PWI. <clears throat> the match from Starcade, WCW Magazine, Sting taking on Hogan. This dates are killed. April of 1998. I keep wanting to say 89 because I'm never saying 90. I just, I never go through these issues and it's just, it's throwing me off. Uh, I never look through these ever. I forgot I had most of these. Um, I actually have a bunch of 90s. I didn't realize I had that much and I, I was kind of shocked. I found a shitload of my boxing magazines too when I was looking for my wrestling world. I forgot how many boxing magazines that I had. Um, May of uh, 1989, Sting with the gold now after getting the belt back, the Starcade scandal. He would be having it taken away from on TV. He would get it back at the following pay-per-view a few months later. But, you know, the damage is done. You're pissing people off when you do shit like that. Um, you know, Vern did it, and look what happened to him. Did it a lot. So did Dusty. Um, the wrestler, these dates are killing me, June of 1998. Supercards 98, that's easy to find. PWI, Sting, and Hogan on the cover. Also some ECW. And this is where Taz and Bigelow fell through the ring at their pay-per-view. And look who's back, the Ultimate Warrior. Something that nobody asked for or cared about. And it was a complete bomb, if you ask me. I mean, gosh. Um, October of 1998, Hogan and the Warrior rekindled. Hogan would win that feud, short feud, wasn't very long, a couple of TV shows, a pay-per-view, and he was out the door. Uh, WCW Magazine now changed, and it's cut more like the uh, WOW issues, uh, a lot of color, still the same amount of advertisements and, and crap inside. Um, WCW Magazine, and it is... It's 1999, I just don't, or 98, I just don't see the, the month on it. <clears throat> Good looking cover. Hogan flexing on the cover. April of 1999, Hogan's retirement, possibly going to the White House or White Lie. This, this was, I remember a lot of people searching for this one and the one behind it. At one time, it was selling for some crazy money on eBay. I was cracking up at the prices and now you can get them for like $6 again. I don't know what it is that drives prices nuts and people go after shit and then it stays hot. 
it happened like that for the apartment wrestling magazines. They were going for hundreds. I mean, you couldn't even touch them. And then, you know, now you can get them at a decent price. I'm talking about the 100% apartment house magazines, not like, you know, the sports review that has an article or two on, sport, on, on the girls. I'm talking about the, the mail-in issues where they were fully nude in them. Uh, NWO uh, coverage on The Wrestler, May of 1999. Pretty good looking shot at the NWO guys. The Wrestler, August of 1999, Hogan, Pure Evil. <clears throat> One of your last looks at Hogan as the world champ on the cover of Body Slam magazine. This is issue number one, and it's got some kind of uh, funky effect here with that. Uh, I never heard of Body Slam. I don't know much about it. I think this is the only one that I have. Uh, a lot of magazines popped up during the uh, NWO time. Wrestling was really hot, and everybody was putting out a magazine for easy buck. One of the few WWF magazines that I have, and it was only because of the NWO. And no, I didn't watch any of it. I didn't watch because I knew it wasn't going to be shit, and I, I wasn't going to be fooled by it. So I wouldn't turn it on. And uh, to my shock, uh, it didn't work out. But um, April of 2002, NWO. Guys are looking really good on the cover here. Why do I have this in here? Oh, the, um, this is a uh, PWI um, photo album, the third edition, but there's just a cool photo of Hogan in here that I've never seen before, old school, back when he was champ uh, with the green belt. Uh, great looking shot. I thought, you know, they should have used that on a, as a poster for a PWI or something or a cover. Just a real good shot. He's looking nice and tight. Um, the belt looks good around his waist and uh, just, just looks a great looking shot there. There's some great photos in this. It's all like this. It's all just champions. And, and with their belts, it's all in color. Um, Bachwinkle, um, a lot of old school guys too. Uh, back in the other pages, there's some, there's some bloody shit in here. Um, Abdul the Butcher, just some old shots. Uh, stunning Steve Austin. Uh, not a bad looking uh, photo uh, book. I don't even remember buying that or where I got it from. And I just happened to find that Hogan picture that I thought was pretty cool, so I thought I'd show it. Uh, WWF Magazine uh, dedicated to Hogan, the man, the myth, the icon, 2002. The wrestler now coming out with glossy paper and back to its almost 100% size as it was back in the 70s and 60s and early 80s. Um, no more of the shitty paper. It's actually done pretty good, a lot of good color. Um, and, and it's, it's too bad that it went so downhill before because it, it became another great looking magazine only to become a combo magazine. They would put, uh, inside wrestling and the wrestler together as one magazine, which was horrible. I have one of those issues here. I'll show you. And then it finally fizzled out and all we have now is PWI. Um, September, uh, 2002 Hogan is, uh, flexing on the cover. What's left for Hulk Hogan. New Wave Wrestling on the cover, also Superstar Graham on the cover. This I didn't mean to show. I don't know what this is either. Um, at least Hogan's on it, right? It's not too far off. WWF 2003, 1963. That's an anniversary thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to show that. I didn't know that was in there. Um, Hogan on his next and also his last uh, cover for uh, Pro Wrestling Weekly and uh, great shot of Hogan now turning back with all the red and yellow in the WWF and uh, looking jacked up and good just for his last run. Uh, good looking older, uh, good looking shot of an older Hogan um, just about at the very end of his uh, career. <clears throat> and this would be his final issue. This is like I was saying, the two magazines in one, if you flip it over, if you, if you flip it over, it's another magazine here, which I was like, wow, what the hell did you guys do? You know, it's horrible. Uh, I didn't like what they did. I didn't like uh, how they got rid of it. But, you know, I guess they're after so many years and wrestling going down the tube shortly after that again, uh, the magazines took a big hit. But this was a long video. Uh, if you stuck with me to the end, you've seen a heck of a lot of Hulk Hogan. So whoever asked for it, I hope you dug it. Hope the rest of you guys liked it, and um, we'll see you guys on the next one. I gotta stretch my legs.